When you run the Cronbach's Alpha procedure in SPSS, you get several tables of output. The first tells us that these analyses are based on 62 cases and that there were no missing data. The second table, called Reliability Statistics, contains Cronbach's Alpha, and in this case it's 0.888. Now, different authors give different recommendations, but general consensus seems to be that anything over about 0.7 indicates that the measure is suitable for research purposes. And anything over about 0.9 to 0.95 suggests redundancy. So in other words, several items asking basically exactly the same thing. Now before reporting this figure though, it's always a good idea to scroll down to the item total statistics table and check in particular the final two columns. Now the corrected item total correlation column tells you the correlation between each item and the sum of the remaining items. A particularly low item total correlation for an item indicates that it's not strongly related to the others and may need to be removed from the scale. The final column is Cronbach's alpha if item deleted and it reports exactly that. It's Cronbach's alpha calculated on the other nine items. So alpha if item deleted is point 873 for item 1. This is what alpha would be if it were calculated only on items 2 through 10. So when looking at this column, you're scanning for any values that are substantially higher than Cronbach's alpha for the full measure. In this case, removing an item wouldn't improve alpha, which is already 0.888. It wouldn't improve it substantially. Now if you do decide to remove any items from a scale like this, don't do it purely based on the results of a reliability analysis. Always consider the information that you have here in the context of both validity, so will the measure still be measuring what you intend it to measure if some items have been removed, and also factor structure. And for information on running factor analyses, you can refer to either the StatHand app or the website.